Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what happened late one night when the other shoe literally dropped for one woman with no explanation. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. It is? Really? Oh, okay, it is. Yes, thank you. Uh, welcome to the program. If you like the uh, show and you want to uh, keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person, sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and just tons of extras there. Uh, the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Check it out, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. And uh, be sure to press subscribe wherever you're listening to us right now, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, iHeart, Spotify, it, they're everywhere now. I mean, Audible, wherever it may be. Press subscribe so you don't miss out any of our episodes that we deliver to you seven days a week here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. It's going We on. deliver seven days a week? Seven days a week. We're like Amazon Lord. Prime. God, no kidding. <laughs> I'm uh, going to go on strike soon for myself. <laughs> And you know what? If you if you were to do that, everyone would understand. Yeah, they'd be like, like, "We get it. Seven days a week is a lot." It is. I mean, well, on two of the days, we we play um, some of our greatest hits, if you will, uh, from our archive of episodes. Uh, but the other five, uh, we have yeah, because we do four regular ones a week now with Harper on, and then the fifth would be the EPP bonus episode. Um, so, and that's just this show. And then there's, you know, the grave talks and dark side of Wikipedia and all that dark side has got three episodes new a week. Uh, grave talks has two new ones a week. So how many, I don't know how many shows I do a week anymore. <laughs> a lot. So what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> exactly. Prep shows. When I, today it was that we're recording this on the, the 5th of July, which is actually a, a legal holiday. Um, but I spent the weekend, uh, with my girlfriend and, and, uh, her kid and, uh, Harper and we had a great time and, you know, it was a lot of, we went to water parks, we did all sorts of fun stuff. And then, um, you know, you get home and it's like, okay, I'm going to get some stuff done. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to sit down and watch television and prep shows, honestly, is what I'm going to get done today. I'm just, you know, it's kind of hit me. I was like driving home this morning and feeling good. And I was like get home like i'm just gonna sit in my I'm bed tired. i'm tired i turned on ozark uh the the television show and i put together episodes of the show for a couple hours and that was my day and but now i'm here so <laughs> well you know i spent the weekend like a lot of pet parents did in my home yeah <laughs> by myself with yeah. my pets hiding underneath a uh, uh rocker recliner yeah, because it's like on Facebook, I like half my Facebook friends are out blowing shit up and the other half are bitching about the half is blowing shit up because their pets can't handle it. Yeah. And I get it. Mm -hmm. It's like, but now that two of my pets have gone pretty deaf, my cat's deaf. From all the fireworks that you do. Yeah, you know me. I'm blowing <laughs> shit up in year my round. backyard. I go, I go get the illegal stuff that you're not even supposed to blow up in the city limits. <laughs> Watch this. Hold my beer. And, and you, yeah, so and your dog holds so, your beer and then you uh <laughs> I invite friends over. <laughs> Just you that, and the pets and a lot of fireworks. <laughs> I was sitting there last night going, I haven't done anything on the fourth of July weekend for so long. Yeah. Because of that. Because like now this is um obviously the most deaf buddy's ever been because <laughs> he's fifteen and a half. Yeah. But he did pretty well with it this year, but I was um, out Saturday night and I came in the house. I was working. I was bartending. You're clubbing. And I came in the house because I love to bartend. I think I love to bartend. Anyways, um, I came in the house. He was literally at the front door, like standing there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. I didn't think about them blowing all this shit off Saturday night. <sighs> yep. It's a lot. It's, like, it's a lot, started, I tell you. Has the war started, Mom? Because <laughs> it sure feels yeah. like it. <sighs> We're under attack. 
Well, there you go. I mean, it's uh, it's been a loud couple of days, but I'm ready for everything to calm down. By the time this airs, we're well into August. So we're almost to the embers, uh, which will be exciting because that means we're getting closer to uh, September, October, November, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I was at a store the other day and all the Halloween stuff and the uh, uh, fall stuff is all out. I was a little bit excited. I was almost going to start buying some stuff to put out, but it was prior to the 4th of July. And I thought, Let's just wait till the fifth. <laughs> so next time I'm there, and by the time this episode airs, I can guarantee my house will have a very distinct fall feel going on to it. So which I'm is ready. kind of fun. I'm ready for it. I just had my pumpkin patch today, and uh, I got some some nice large pumpkins growing. So hopefully the bugs don't get them and it survives, and it won't be a failed uh, <laughs> experiment. But uh, yeah, I'm ready for it. I I'm I'm enjoying summer, but. I'm ready for all that fun stuff. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to our first story of the day. It says, in the summer of 1994, my nephew, my late sister, and I decided to play with a Ouija board in my apartment I shared with my boyfriend at the time. I bought the board from his metaphysical shop in Colfax called ISIS, after the goddess, not the terrorist group. I'm just thinking maybe it's time for a business name change, you know, it, <laughs> it, you know, I get it. Like maybe you had it prior to that being a thing, but you know, if like your company was named, you know, Hitler's, you know, bakery, you probably still got to change the fucking name. Right? I don't care how long you've had it. It's just, it's time. Anyway, uh, it's in uh, Denver as opposed to uh, getting it from Target or Kmart. We did not have Walmarts in Denver yet, I don't think. Uh, the direction said, whatever you do, do not use orange candles. So naturally, we got orange candles to burn during our ceremony. Our session did not last exceptionally long, maybe 20 minutes, I think. We think we contacted someone or something that called itself Dan. We really think the planchette moved by itself. I do not recall if we said goodbye. I just remembered us getting bored or irritated. So we moved on to something else. The things I experienced over the next several months were weird and creepy, to say the least. One evening, I was home alone and sitting on our couch watching TV. My shoes were on the floor in front of the TV in a pile where I left them when I kicked them off a couple hours before. Visualize the right shoe sitting sole down, and the left shoe is upside down on top of it at an askew angle. I noticed, I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye and looked down just in time to see the shoe that had been on top and upside down on the other side rolled into the sole onto the floor. I immediately tried to explain it with physics. I thought that gravity had really been pulling at this whole time and it finally got enough momentum to land sole side down, possibly. Just as I'm trying to reconcile that shoe moving, I hear something in the kitchen behind me slap the counter. I let out a spontaneous audible gasp and turned around to see a box of taco shells that had been on the top shelf sitting on the countertop. Yes, I had left the cupboard open because I have a bad habit of doing that, but things do not usually fall out on their own. I felt something with me, but I did not know what. Nothing more happened that night. One evening I had gone to bed and my boyfriend was still out in the living room. I felt my bed start to vibrate. It was not shaking violently like in The Exorcist. It was more like someone had flipped a fancy bed to a massage setting. I did not have a bed like that. I never experienced that before. I haven't tried to pass it off as the AC or the heater. But neither of those things ever made that happen before or after. I made sure that I was awake feeling this, and I felt like I was. I cannot do anything but lie there and feel it. In fact, I think I just shut my mind off I went to sleep because I did not know what else to do. I never spoke of it again until now. My boyfriend, who was logically minded and not given any kind of flights or fancy or paranormal occurrences, told me about something that happened to him one day when I was not home. He told me he was in our bathroom area getting ready for work when he saw one of my hair accessories, like a decorative chopstick with a bubble or something on it for a visual, move back and forth on the countertop on its own. He tried to no avail to find a logical explanation for it. By the time Jimmy and I were both getting ready to go to work as we worked at the same place and started uh, and started a while during the day, Jimmy was in the shower with the door closed and I was in the living room brushing my long hair. Remember specifically, I had the brush in my right hand and was brushing the hair from the left side of my head down to the left front. 
I felt a hand gently stroke the hair that was falling down my right shoulder blade. Again, I gasped audibly and spun around in surprise, thinking I would see my boyfriend. He was still in the shower. The door closed. I could hear the shower running behind the closed door. There was nobody there that I could see with my eyes. Over the next several weeks, I took several pictures in my apartment, but never got anything on film. Jimmy and I went on vacation for two weeks, and for someone's suggestion, I put a bowl of salt and a bowl of sugar out of my desk near where I felt a lot of the activity. The person who suggested the salt and sugar said that it's believed that it, it is good in the spirit, the sugar will be disturbed, and if it is a negative spirit, the salt will be disturbed. We came back from California two weeks later, and both the salt and the sugar had been shoved off the desk onto the floor. We had neither animals nor earthquakes. I began putting out my feelers, asking for advice because I was getting scared. A couple of my friends suggested sage smudge sticks. I had never heard of them at the time. I did not even know where to get one. One of my friends just happened to have one for me. As I was telling her my story, tears came to my eyes. She handed me the smudge stick and said, Here, you need this more than I do. I asked if I needed to smudge more than once and was told, If you believe it's going to work, it'll work the first time. I smudged our apartment one night when Jimmy was home and sleeping in bed. I got every nook and cranny, including him and me. Never had another weird incident in that apartment after I smudged. I'm so grateful that you guys give us an outlet for our stories. Thank you so much. Even though I do not know you personally, I absolutely love you all, and I wish you all the best. It's a good story. And so was the the whole thing with the Ouija board, that all happened in that house? Yes, I believe it was all kind of the, the beginning of everything there. So they're just like, they go to ISIS and they get... Yeah, you go to ISIS right after you... get you, ISIS uh, and I get a Ouija board. Yeah. Now it's like, what could go wrong there? Yeah. Not only did you get a Ouija board, you got it from ISIS. And you go to Taliban and get uh, the, the planchette. <laughs> right. Because the Taliban has the best ones. Exactly, yeah. But it, but nothing before must have been happening in that house. No, it seemed that so that was like, what kind of opened up all the activity that yeah, started so happening. Yeah, everything was cool. And then they do that stupid thing and get the Ouija board from ISIS. Yep. Then all that shit happens. And that's like stuff that's hard to explain, like. The bed shaking like that, I'm like, okay, earthquake, because we get the little ones here. But it only lasts for, yeah, you know, seconds. Sure. It seems like forever, but it doesn't last that long. And but th that sounds like that went on for quite a while. I don't know how you explain that. I don't know how your shoes rearrange. I don't know how the box of taco shells falls out of the cupboard. And, and okay, maybe that one you could explain. Like maybe it was actually precariously placed in the cupboard you didn't realize it you gotten something else out you kind of knocked it a little bit sure i mean anything's possible could. yeah but you know you know when somebody touches you or something like that yeah yeah that i don't know it just seems to me cause and effect very much so i mean it's there, there's a point I was going to make there, and it just slipped my mind. What were some of the read in, or in, tell me again some of those points? It was one right prior to tacos we were talking about. Um, there was the shoe thing, the bed. Shaking. Oh, the bed, the bed shaking thing. How how much do you think uh, spirits hate the memory foam bed industry? <laughs> it's like I tried so hard to shake this person. Yeah, away. I mean, it used to be so easy to shake a bed. You know, and everyone would feel it if it's just, you know, a, a box spring and a, a, you know, coil mattress. But now, I mean, you have the memory foam bed with the pillow top and then the extra memory foam and then another layer of pillow on top of that. It's like you're not going to feel shit. I mean, you could have a sumo wrestler sit on the side of the bed or jump on it and you're like, I don't feel anything. So, I mean, I'd imagine if you're a That's spirit. That's funny. I've never you know, thought of that, but you're right. You've made a really good point. If you're a spirit and you're trying to just muster up the energy to get a little bit of attention, you have enough to shake the bed. It would have been a hell of a lot easier to do that years ago than it is today. Thanks to the memory foam industry. <laughs> That's so true. It is totally, totally screwed with the ghosts. It was ga a game changer for the ghosts. 
That's just funny. I think it's got to do other shit like possess people, whether than because like I used to, I would just shake your mattress. All it was going to do was just do a little rattle, but now you can't do that. So guess what? I got to go inside of you. Huh? <laughs> Tough shit, bitch. <laughs> you know, it's. <laughs> so now it's demonic possession. Now you're possessed by me and I happen to like tacos a lot. So <laughs> guess what's going to happen? Hey, bitch, we're making tacos. Yeah. And you wake up in the middle, like, and I woke up, and the next morning there was taco meat everywhere and <laughs> sour cream. <laughs> so delicious. And I had it all over my side. I didn't know what happened. Somebody was screaming. Like, this is the best ghost ever. We have yeah. tacos together. It's like now I'm trying to get him to have a beer with me. It's like either you were really high or you're possessed, one of the two, that uh, you were doing that in the middle of the night. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. It could be like a new game, Possession or High. I just remember once, I I was really high. I'll just be honest. Yeah. And and I'd been out with my friends till really late, and then I had the munchies. And I remember we stopped on the way home, and I got chips and dip. It was bean dip. I remember it very distinctly. And... <laughs> So I go into my house and I turn on the TV and I fell asleep, but I fell asleep and I had the bean dip, the little container on my chest and I had a chip that was dipped. And I, I woke up, I was still holding it. And I was like, whoa, like I just passed out. Like I was awake when I dipped it. You were able, you were able to get to the that, dip. Into my mouth. It just. <laughs> that was a bridge too far. That was where it's like, sorry. I just, I, I can't. I just, but I, I, Cause I woke up and there it was a Sunday morning. There's some preacher on TV and that was weird. And then I'm holding a chip that's been already dipped. <laughs> I ate it because I mean, you oh, that's know, great. It's dip. Ah, that's like drinking wine the next day when you find it like sitting around or something. It's like, well, right. Like, like, well, I didn't finish that last night. Like, there's no bugs in it. Might as well not let it go to waste. <laughs> Have it with breakfast. <laughs> there might be a problem when you're eating the, the chip that was halfway dipped last night and then drinking the day old wine. It's wow. Demonic possession or just high. In my case, it was literally just high. <laughs> Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi, let's hear your story. Hey, Tony. Brian Harris again. I'm still trying to figure out your automated system. Um, I said I called again, and I don't think I actually sent the message. So I'm going to give you that one. I listened to your most recent, I think it was June 10th with Harper, talking about school supplies and I was very pleased to hear you say that the best thing about school supply shopping is that they put that away and they put out Halloween. That has always been my frame of mind. Um, Anyway, I wanted to tell you a quick story. Um, Me and my father kind of butted heads a lot. He, He passed away over 20 years ago now. Um, in my high school years, we had several conversations about ghosts and, and psychic connections and that, and I'll give you an example. He had a project he was working on. I think he was fixing a trailer or something like that, working at a friend's house and he'd come home every day. It was like Friday. He'd come home complaining that it wasn't working Saturday. He'd come home complaining it wasn't working. Um, Saturday night he had a dream that he was working with his friend on this project and it whatever they were doing it snapped together worked exactly like they wanted it to do and so Sunday when he got to his friend's house he said well I had a dream last night where I did something like this and just like in the dream the project snapped right together and he come home bragging about that. And I'm like, dad, that's kind of a psychic connection. You kind of had a, a dream premonition and he scoffed at that. And there was another time I'm mowing the lawn and we live out in the country. So there's no other noises around us. Um, I was mowing the lawn 
and he was working on a project probably 10 yards away from me and I heard my name yelled so I stopped the mower and I turned around and I said Are you, did you just call me and he looked bewildered and like I was just taking a breath to holler your name because I need some help over here and probably not right then but I did say that 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 was a psychic connection and he scoffs at that um, he passed away in 2001 and it was mid-November and it was an unseasonably warm winter in Iowa that year and I mean there was no snow on the ground even as close going as close to probably Christmas this might have actually been Christmas day I was driving to my mother's house who the house her house was about two miles away the church dad's buried at is about a mile away and my two younger children are asleep in the car and I'm driving and as I start to get closer to the church my emotions start welling up and I kind of cocked my head to the left to fight back the tears and I noticed in the sky there was a heart perfectly shaped heart not not a heart not a heart shaped cloud but like cirrus clouds were drawing like drawing framing a heart in the otherwise clear sky and I kind of slowed down looked at that for a while and thought why don't I have a cam you know I before I had a cell phone in my pocket with a camera on it and so I raced to the farm but by the time I got there that heart the clouds had dissipated and it no longer looked anything like a heart and so I just chose to not mention anything um, sometime during that time um, possibly another day I'm not sure but I had a I had been sleeping on the couch because I was having trouble sleeping a lot of it because of my emotions over losing dad and in my dream he walked into my living room which he had only ever been in my house once before but he walked into the living room and in his best Elmer Fudd voice which he he did that voice a lot he was a very animated man he, he walked in and very solemnly said, Bye, Brian. I don't do Elmer Fudd that well. And I you know, snapped awake, and obviously he wasn't there. But those two instances, I, I didn't want to try and convey that to the at the farm, Mom's house, because I'd burst into tears, and everyone around me would burst into tears. Um, so I wrote it down, typed it out printed it out and so I could just lay it on the table and say here's something I experienced and after my brother read it he motioned to me to follow him out of the house and he said that in that same time frame he had had a vivid dream about dad where dad came to him and asked him did, did I die and Steve told him yes you had you were in a car accident and I don't know any more details about his dream, but it was all in that same time frame. And we kind of chalked it up to Dad kind of letting us know he was okay and coming to the realization he, he's passed away. And that heart was his message to me to, to let, let him go and that he was doing okay wherever he was. Um, Again, I have I have more stories to tell you. I got one. It's kind of a long one. I'll call back later. Thank you. Thanks for sharing uh, your story and experience with us. You know, I think a lot of times when you lose someone, um, you'll see them in your dreams, and because that's like the place where they can get through mm-hmm. to you. You know, because especially after someone dies, it, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of, you know, funerals to plan and people are calling. Everybody's reaching out. But at night, you know, that's, I just really think 
that's a connection mm -hmm. with them. I really, really do. I think it's interesting where in this case, it wasn't so much the dead delivering a message to the living. It was delivering the living delivering a message to the dead of what was going on and what was happening so they could better understand where they were at. Mm-hmm. It was really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. 855-853-4802 uh, is our phone number. This isn't a ghost story, but it's a headline that I just saw. Because, and it, But it's like one of my nightmares. This would be like something I've always been afraid of. Because I think it was like a news story about this. It probably came out like in the 80s. Uh, but now it, like it happened again. And it probably happens on a semi-regular basis. Man bitten by neighbors escape python in toilet in Austria. So in the Associated Press, a man in Austria was bitten by a 1.6 meter python during an early morning visit to the toilet at his home on Monday, police said. The reptile, which apparently escaped from a neighbor's apartment and may have slithered through the drains, was cleaned and handed back to its owner. The 65-year-old victim felt a nip in the genital area shortly after sitting on the toilet at home. Uh, in Grays just after 6 a.m. According to a statement from police in uh, Styria Provin uh, province, uh, he then looked into the toilet and discovered the albino uh, python. Snake apparently had escaped unnoticed from the apartment and the man of uh, the 24-year-old neighbor wasn't immediately possible to figure out how it escaped and how it got into the toilet. But police said it may have made its way through the drains. I could see how he missed it if it's an albino python. A reptile expert was called to retrieve the snake, which was returned to his owner. Police said the younger man kept 11 non-venomous constrictor snakes and a gecko in his apartment in terraniums and drawers. He faces an investigation on suspicion of causing bodily harm by negligence. The victim sustained only minor injuries, police said. Oh, my God. Okay, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, so you have a python? Like... Uh, number one, I would not have a python, but I would think that would be something you'd want to make sure it's secure and safe. And, yeah. you know, like I have a cat. I won't let my cat <laughs> go outside by herself, let alone like, oh, my python. It whoops. It got out of its like, how does it just get out? I don't know. I suppose when you're when you're uh, kind of managing 11 snakes uh, in between terrariums and drawers maybe not be the most organized and, individual. What was it, a gecko? And a, and gecko, a gecko. And a gecko. But pythons, though, they, they squeeze, don't they? They don't, they're not necessarily yeah. poisonous. Because I wouldn't think that you'd want to, like, just for your own safety. Yeah. Like, I don't really want to go to bed with any feeling that maybe the python's not secured and it's yeah whatever you put it in. I, and I was just thinking, though, I mean, if it's a, if it's an albino python, it would blend in pretty well if you have a, you know, a white toilet bowl or, you know, something that's kind of off white that would you wouldn't even see the damn thing. And that's like this is like yeah, the but scariest. Did say, like, seriously, if I walked in and lifted up the toilet seat and I, and even looked at my toilet. Now I, I got to make sure I got my but, glasses on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> because it's not yeah. just going to be like, oh, what is that? Uh, that thing like, oh, now what if it's a camouflage python? in the toilet is if we didn't have enough shit to worry about already. Now we got to add that one to the list. The only good thing is you and I each live in a house yeah. as opposed to an apartment. Yeah. So that's good because I think, well, I mean, I, I do, but I live with Harper and you never know what she's coming up with. She, you know, what if she orders a, a Python from the Python store one day and doesn't tell me. And then I'm thinking, you know, she's got like an LOL doll up there and suddenly there's a Python going through our sewer system. That, that's how this shit could go wrong really quick. Yeah, and she comes in, Dad, can I have a python and you here? Dad, can I have some pizza? And you're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, sure. You're like, why are we getting all this python food suddenly, honey? This just seems out of character. Um, <laughs> You no, told me I could have one. I like python food. I just, it, it's like, it tastes like candy. Okay. Yum, well, yum, 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 yum. Sure, enjoy your python food, honey. <laughs> <laughs> shit start. That's how the shit goes down. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Well, though, you know, that's like terrifying. after you watch Investigation Discovery for a couple hours, there, there are parents like that where it's like, I could totally see that happening in that household. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. Well, there's your uh, Python lesson of the day. That is truly a nightmare right there. I, that, God. Yeah. 
I, that just gives me the shivers. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. And EPP, as we call them, sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the extras, the advanced episodes, the archive, uh, the EPP bonus episodes. It's only $5 a month, and that's what keeps us on the air. Again, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>